Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. Our sign language interpreter is Meresha Awiti. Let's start off with the search for at least nine members of a local music band who perished in the Lake Victoria boat accident yesterday, which will begin tomorrow morning. Now, according to Bondo Assistant County Commissioner Gerald Mutuku, a joint committee has been formed comprising officials of the Kenya Maritime Authority, Department of Fisheries, and both the county and national governments. Last night, eight survivors and families of the deceased spent a night in the cold as they waited for the search to begin. A survivor, Nicholas Ocheng, said that it is a tradition that survivors of any accident on the lake must wait at the shore until all the bodies of all victims are recovered. The Saturday morning incident brings the number of people who have died in Lake Victoria in Siaya County to at least 15 in the last five months alone. Now, over 800 students of Itierio Boys High School in Kisi South were forced to spend the night in the cold after they burnt down seven of their 11 dormitories. The incident occurred a few minutes past 10 p.m. on Saturday after the school's three-hour weekend entertainment program. The students are said to have demanded to watch one of the games in the ongoing European Football Championships. <laughs> the Portugal versus Croatia game was to kick off at 10 p.m. and the school's deputy principal, Apollo Omungu, is said to have been against the idea since the entertainment time was over. <laughs> But some of the students who wished not to appear on camera said that the school management had introduced some stringent rules that they were opposed to after the midterm break. Sioni kaka kuna sheria yenyewe itaweza kuwa tofauti na zenye tulikuwa tunatumia. Juu kila kila mahali kuna kuanga na sheria na lazima tutazifuata. The school principal had just arrived at the school from a school's heads meeting in Mombasa. The students burned down the seven dormitories, including their own belongings, and also destroyed other property. They later crossed over to the neighboring Itirio Girls Secondary School and smashed down windows in the school's home science laboratory and library. When I was called by the watchman that the school was in chaos, so straight away I went to the police to report, and they acted very, very promptly. We came up here with them. But we found it was late, a lot of damage had already been uh, done. Seemingly not satisfied with the extent of their destruction, the students moved to the school's main kitchen and broke all the utensils, including their own plates. Kisi County Commissioner Kula Hachi and the Governor of Kisi County, James Ungwai, led the county security team to the school and said a thorough investigation needs to be done so as to determine the real cause of the unrest. Lazima wanafunzi wawe shuleni kusoma na sio kuaribu mali ya uma. Tunawakanya kwa sababu mtiote hata ukua makakumi ukipatikana umefunja sheria hatua itachukuliwa. It's now high time that we held very, very serious discussions on what causes these uh, student riots. This is the eighth incident of fire to occur in secondary schools in Kisi County in four months. Other schools that have also been affected include Yamagwa Boys and Girls Secondary School, Magena and Ryokindo Schools, St. Peter's Suneka, Yamagwa Mixed and Omobera Secondary School. Fred Moturi, KTN News, Kisi. Court leader Raila Odinga is accusing the Jubilee administration of reviving the country's dark days. Raila was speaking to court supporters in Nyamira County. The opposition leader had accompanied Kitutu Masaba MP Timothy Bosire on his homecoming following his recent detention at Pangani police station over hate speech claims. After a tour of Kilifi County where Raila Odinga led his court brigade for several rallies to welcome Asha Jumwa back home, today it was Timothy Bosiri's turn. Nyamira County was the epicenter. Addressing their supporters, the six court legislators were among those arrested over claims of hate speech maintained that the charges against them were just but a fabrication. <laughs> Tunasema wasi. Na hatuta nyamaza, tutaendelea kusema maswala ya ukiritimba 
wa serikali ya jubilee kwa mimi natembea ndani ya kao na hapo kwa national center ikapigwa bimbo kama mtu ambaye kama alshabab ambaye anakuja kuwa akiwa nore au captain wa mabusu wale ambao ni tano walikuwa jela ina mama wawili na wanaume watatu Court leader Raila Odinga accused the Jubilee government of using the police to intimidate the opposition. Hii inaonyesha kuna kitu ambayo inaendelea kwa taifa letu. Na mpaka sisi tusimame tutoke ile tena turudi kwa mapigano. Ili tukomboe nchi yetu tena mara ya tatu. The IBC issue also took center stage at every stopover with speaker after speaker maintaining that the electoral body has no choice but to disband. Of course, the arrest of the six court leaders has created yet another avenue for the court brigade to hit at the Jubilee government. Yesterday, they were in Kilifi. Today, they are here in Nyamira. And tomorrow, they'll be headed to Busia before heading to Machakos on Sunday. Rashid Ronald, KTN News, Manga, in Nyamira County. Well, uh, let's stay with uh, matters in the opposition. And of course, uh, you've been aware of um, the back and forth that has been taking place in the Orange Democratic Movement. There was a press statement from Ababu Namamba and other leaders from Western Kenya. And then there were the rebuttals. We have Ababu Namamba, who's the Secretary General of the Orange Democratic Movement, who joins us live tonight on Checkpoint. Mr. Secretary General, thank you for joining us. Asante Sam. It's always a pleasure having you on Checkpoint. Thank you. So let's start by talking about um, you know that press conference uh, that was held uh, last week. You talked about uh, mistreatment by ODM top brass. I know you laid that out, but mm -hmm. uh, if you could do that again, uh, you know, just for us here on Checkpoint. Uh, many saying you are the top brass of the party, but then um, you are being sidelined. Is that the case? Yeah. First of all, let me correct uh, an impression because yes. I mean it, it has been a, there has been a deliberate attempt to sort of wrongly paint this to be an ababu matter. Okay. Yet, when you looked at that press conference, there were nine of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we were led to that press conference by the uh, national vice chairman, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Paul Otuoma, yeah. who indeed is the person who read that statement. Mm -hmm. So I want, first of all, this point to be made absolutely clear, that this was a position taken by nine elected leaders of ODM. It is not a position of a barber as a person. And it is, a, it is a, the sentiments in that statement are sentiments that I share because I signed that statement yeah. as part of the, of yeah. the leadership. Yeah. And, and, and so this attempt to isolate a babu, mm -hmm. profile a babu, make this a, an ababu matter, really is a lost cause. Now, coming to the issues raised there, because there are very weighty issues raised in that statement, there were basically three issues. Mm -hmm. One is the issue of um, uh, consultation. Leaders are saying we want to be consulted more. Right. And that if we are consulted more, then we'll feel part of what goes on in our party. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, leaders are saying that we want to be taken more seriously. Don't take us for granted. And taking us seriously means that when you're coming to our areas, involve us. When you're making critical decisions about the party, involve us, mm -hmm. engage us. Mm -hmm. Example was given of the honorable member for Huisero, honorable Bandola, mm -hmm. who was saying, how does the national vice chairman of the party come into my backyard, my mm -hmm. constituency, mm -hmm. Are purporting to unveil party officials in my absence mm -hmm. without having informed me. It is disrespectful and it's, it's discourteous and, and it, 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 it's basically a looking down upon a leader. Okay. The last issue was about the office of the Secretary General. Yeah. And the statement was saying, you cannot have an office that has been stripped of all authority mm -hmm. to uh, execute the mandate of that office so that you have an office basically by name. And if you have an office basically by name, you mm -hmm. should not expect any results out of that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that because <coughs> um, the functions um, of the office of the Secretary General and the introduction of some of these other offices that you say uh, are possibly making the office of the Secretary General of the party a lame duck, um, some of these functions were ratified at Bomas of Kenya, were they not? Uh, After the Naivasha meeting. So some would ask... Um, so if you knew this from that time, why complain now? This has been the situation, uh, a situation which you ratified yourself at Bomas of Kenya. You want meeting. to clarify two things again. Yeah. Number one, I'm not complaining. Okay. <laughs> I never, I've never been a whiner. 
So what would you I'm, I'm not I'm not whining, I'm not complaining, uh -huh. I'm letting the world know the truth. Okay. And letting the world know the truth does not necessarily mean that you're complaining or you're okay. whining. All right. Number two, I took the position of Secretary General in good faith, mm -hmm. in absolute good faith. Mm -hmm. I know we had had a very difficult time yes. in the build-up to Kasarani. Yeah. Kasarani ended up being Kisirani. I was poised to win this position of Secretary General by landslide. They say the Lilian Vuani Mawingu, all signs pointed to a, 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 a landslide victory for me. The men in black disrupted that, elec that election. We took almost one year to sort of uh, make peace and, uh, and, and come back together. <coughs> and, and, and ultimately, when we struck this deal in Naivasha, I believed that the venom, the poison, the mm -hmm. war mm -hmm. that had, uh, that had uh, sort of uh, was the backdrop to Kasarani was all something in the, o all right. of the past. But then again, you agreed um, to the Secretary General and the addition of the other organs of the party um, that you now say, not complaining, but now letting the world <laughs> know yes. um, that, uh, you know, the office of the Secretary General is being usurped. Basically, but yet you, you, you know, agreed to you know when, when certain positions are created, right. the, at that time, at that point, it was not clear or it was not apparent that there was a underhand intention okay. that some of these o offices were actually being created. So were created. you okay with, with uh, that arrangement then? The arrangement you need to know, Yvonne, uh -huh. was that some of these things were done haphazardly. Okay. They were not done in any consultative fashion. Things are moved on the floor, mm -hmm. decisions are made on the floor, and then they are pushed through, but you without really knowing what exactly are going to be the responsibilities of these new officers. But now as they evolve, you can clearly see that there was a hidden agenda okay. behind this. But that is not what is important, Yvonne. Uh -huh. What is important is that uh, the group of nine leaders, and it's not just the nine leaders, mm -hmm. I can tell you for certainty that a lot other people are part of this agenda. Mm -hmm. And what they are saying is, there is something that brought us together within ODM. And I'm a founding member of ODM. I'm yeah. not a guest in ODM. Uh -huh. I'm a shareholder in ODM. And something brought us together, certain high ideals, democracy, justice, consultation, inclusivity, all those ideals that brought us together, these leaders are posing this fundamental question. Do these ideals still obtain? Do they? Are in these ideals still driving the movement? In your view, do they? When people feel that they're not included, mm -hmm. is inclusivity still an idea that drives us? When people feel that certain decisions are not democratically arrived at, uh -huh. is democracy, the high ideals of democracy, still guiding us? Let me give you two examples. Oh, okay. Two quick examples, Very and then you can move on. Yes, please. The other day, we suffered what I believe to have been an embarrassment mm -hmm. when we purported to appoint Helen Sandili mm -hmm. to represent court mm -hmm. in the negotiations over IBC. Mm -hmm. What did she do? She threw the appointment right back into our faces. And, and the question was, how was this decision made? Why okay. was there no consultation right. that would have avoided this kind of embarrassment? That okay. is just an example. All right. Yes. Um, I'd like us to, to move quickly because there's then there's also the allegations from within the party mm -hmm. uh, that you are, you know, an absentee leader of the party. Um, case in point, we have uh, the protests, uh, the anti-IBC protests. Some would say even the, the Okoa Kenya rallies that were uh, taking place around the country, um, you were conspicuously absent from any of the press conferences that were made by we your party. We call that. Um, also, mm -hmm. on the streets, uh, many would expect that the Secretary General of a party like ODM would be present on the streets. Um, you and you are now being accused of not being absent. My y question is, yes. do you agree with the protests, the way in which they were carried out by your party? Do you think IEBC uh, has issues and needs sorting out? Um, and why are you not on the perhaps uh, sele joint select committee? Yvonne, let me first of all clarify one thing. My capacity is not in doubt. I was not baptized general in ODM for nothing. I was baptized a general in this party because of my performance. And I am one person in ODM who does not need to prove my performance. I have proven myself. I have earned my stripes, as they say in military terms. What we are talking about here is a scenario which the English call nitpicking. People are doing what is called nitpicking. Because if you talk about IEBC, I am the first person within the code fraternity mm -hmm. to raise the red flag on IEBC. 
you hosted me in this studio, uh, uh, Yvonne, when I was chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. Mm -hmm. At that time, I had just initiated an inquiry by the Public Accounts Committee into the IEBC. That report is already in the National Assembly. I am the first person to actually start an inquiry into IEBC. My position as to the need, the necessity, the urgency to restructure IEBC, to reform IEBC is not in doubt. What I do not agree with, that you can reform a constitutional organ using unconstitutional means. Okay. I will never agree with that. I will never support that. Mm -hmm. I do not support violence in any form or characterization. Mm -hmm. Do I support reforms in IEBC? Oh yes, absolutely. Do I support peaceful protest as enacted in Article 37 of mm -hmm. the Constitution? Absolutely, mm -hmm. but the Constitution is very clear. Peaceful and unarmed. Okay. Incidences of violence, incidences of destroying property, incidences of death, whether that is being so caused by citizens or okay. by the police, is a no-go for me. All right, so do you agree with the way in which uh, <coughs> some of the party members then were out on the streets? Do you think that they conform to Article 37, that they were peacefully protesting and were peaceably and unarmed during those protests? In other words, do you agree with the manner in which the protests were, were carried out? Yvonne. I led a peaceful protest. The most peaceful protest in this whole process is one I led in Kisi. I led that protest. Mm -hmm. But another fundamental question I want you to ask, if indeed we want to do an inquisition mm -hmm. of who was and who was not in these protests, mm -hmm. how come this protest was confined to only small pockets of the country? How come the, no, 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 that's to fundamental. To that's be honest, that's yes. fundamental. And you're raising some fundamental it's questions. A fundamental issue. But some would say you are the Secretary General of the party. Why did you not raise this within the party? Because even as a Secretary We're General. Only in Nairobi and in Mombasa, why aren't we in the <laughs> other parts of the country? Because Shouldn't this have been something you would initiate as the top brass of the party? And it goes back to the point I've made of being a ceremonial Secretary General. Okay. When this decision was made mm -hmm. to go to the street, the style of the protest, the timing, the process. I was never consulted. I was never involved. I am not a marionette who someone will sit in some place mm -hmm. and simply play strings and expect that when you tell me, jump, I should ask how okay. high. I'm okay. not that kind of person you want. Right. Okay. So I, I, I will not be party to processes that I am not involved. And that is the reason why Oparanya is the governor for Kakamega and the deputy party leader of this party, why did he never lead a protest in Kakamega? Why were there no protests in Bungoma where we have a, we have a code called principle? Uh -huh. Why were there no protests in Machakos, in Makweni, in Kitui, where we have another code called principle? Okay. If indeed you want to conduct an inquisition, mm -hmm. do an inquisition that covers all these and tell me why were all these leaders missing in action? All right. Okay. And it boils down to running an outfit where you're not consulting, all right. where you're not involving people. Okay, yes. okay. So um, a statement uh, from advocate Edwin Sifuna <coughs> says um, that you are an absentee leader in ODM, and I quote, at critical moments you fail to rally the party, fail to participate in the pro-referendum drives, and you have currently stayed off the anti-IBC drives. He recently took over your office, <laughs> and I think he's on the phone now. Let's, let's speak to him. Uh, Edwin Sifuna? Hi, Yvonne. Hi. We have uh, the ODM Secretary General, Ababu Namamba, as I'm sure you uh, know by now. Would you like to make your statement to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have uh, the ceremonial Secretary General. It's good that you've given the substantive Secretary General an opportunity to also speak on this matter. Uh -huh. uh, it is quite interesting that, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, I consider Ababu Namamba my friend and uh, that I have nothing personal against him, but that uh, as a party we are getting at a critical juncture where we do not want uh, people to engage in uh, excuses, but we need to get uh, ready for the election in 2017. Uh, what I hear Babu to be saying is that uh, the party should actually be concentrating on creating an ideal working environment for Babu Namwamba, and that uh, that is what we should be doing first so that we can make him comfortable before he can come to, to work. Uh, we have uh, been, uh, you know, carrying out a lot of activities in his absence. I have heard him talk about the IBC protest. And if you listen to the language that he is using, the language that Ababu is using is the very same language that Jubilee leaders use against this legitimate protest. Because why would a learned friend like Ababu 
recall what has been happening, an unconstitutional process of removal of the uh, 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 IEPC commissioners, when he is very well aware that what has been going on is a constitutional process. This is a process that is protected by the Constitution. If indeed he has reservations about how the protests have been carried out, it is his responsibility. And you've seen other leaders in ODM and in court uh, even coming up with suggestions on how best we can carry out this protest without causing any damage to property and injury to you know, uh, our, our, our party members. So you have seen the introduction of uh, peace marshals, for instance, during this uh, IPC protest. These are ideas that have come from leaders who are keen to see the party succeed in what it is doing. You don't sit somewhere, don't okay. participate in a process, and then you will come and complain right. that uh, it is not being done in okay. accordance to... All to right, Edwin, Edwin, I'd like to ask you, because you recently yes. went to his office at yes. uh, Orange House, and you, Absolutely. Um, you know, staged what some would call a bloodless coup, and you want to take over his position, even though that has been criticized by, uh, you know, the organs of the party. So is it your statement today that you want to take over Babu Namamba's position at ODM? I already took over that particular position, and it, it cannot be a coup where there is no leader. That office was vacant, and it has been vacant for the past 18 months. Okay. Uh, we, as a party, our constitution, and you should know that I read constitutions and the laws for a living. I know that the constitution of ODM places supremacy in the membership of a party. And uh, the statement that I heard from the executive director, Mr. Odorong Wen, yeah. pointed to structures and procedures in the party. But it, uh, just like our national constitution, uh -huh. we anticipated a situation where these structures and procedures would become a hindrance to the achievement of what the membership would want to do. Because this problem about the absentee secretary general has been a problem for the past 18 months. Okay. Where have right. these this processes and procedures been to resolve the issue? So okay. that if the so membership... Now, yes. Uh, I, I, we have a very short uh, amount of time, and I think you've made your point. I would like uh, Honorable Amab Bunamamba to respond to what you've just said, please. Uh, Yvonne, I'll just say two things quickly so that we don't waste too much time on no nothing, really, because this is nothing. There, there are no issues here. Mm -hmm. Number one, the action taken by uh, Edwin Sifuna is, is an illustration of the, the bad manners in ODM that I have been committed to cleaning up. Anarchy, impunity, disrespect for the constitution and established order of doing things. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that we must reform in the party. Right. And he's not the first one by the one to do it. When Magherer left ODM, another, another, another person, I believe it was um, uh, Wafula Buke, attempted to install himself as executive director. So it's, 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 an, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tradition of bad manners. But uh, back to what Edwin is saying, first of all, I would ask, who is Edwin Sifuna? Who is Edwin Sifuna? In, 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 the, in, the, in the structure of the party, in the leadership of the party, I know no character called Edwin Sifuna. And I will not respond to a character who holds no official position. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he's speaking he's for. He's in the dispute uh, resolution uh, uh, I, I, I will not of your party. I, I'll really Do respond. you not recognize no, uh, no, that role no, that no, he no. plays in ODM? No, no. Those are small things that I would not want to respond to. It's a okay. time waster. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what's next for you? Because you said you're not complaining, you're not whining. Uh, you've talked about bad manners in the party. Yeah. Uh, you're raising some of these issues. So some say either fix it from within mm. or leave ODM. Now what I are the options? Do you think your options are restricted to those two? No, 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 no. Yvonne, nobody can restrict my options. I am a, a very independent-minded person. I'm a leader duly elected by the people. I cannot be intimidated, I cannot be cowed, I cannot be boxed into a pigeon hole. I have options, I have choices. And on this matter, what I want to make it absolutely clear to those out there who are attempting to personalize this matter is that many leaders in this party have come together, they have identified issues, they have posed a, posed a fundamental question which I posed to you. Mm -hmm. The ideals that brought us together, democracy, equity, inclusivity, consultation, the ideals that we want to see, even in the management of the affairs of this country, do those ideals still obtain? And what we are saying is very simple. We want to see our party run on the basis of the same ideals we have talked about. Mm -hmm. When I sought the position of Secretary General, I identified certain critical issues. 
among those critical issues was the nomination mess that always mm -hmm. encumbers us, always busts our balloon as it mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you look at uh, some of the things I have done since I became Secretary General. Mm -hmm. My first act was to preside over the by-elections in Kajiado Central mm -hmm. and Madare constituency. And I did a splendid job. We did clean nominations, very fair, very free, and we delivered those two seats. Okay, all right. Because Secondly, yes. uh, our, uh, this is an important point, Yvonne. All right. Please, we moved on to start the process of reforming the, elect uh, the National Elections Board. Uh -huh. I announced the disbandment of that board. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some monkey business has been going on. Marat returning the chair of the board through the back door. Mm -hmm. How do you disband IEBC and retain Isaac Hassan? unless really you are not serious about reforms. Uh -huh. And so what we are saying is that there are critical issues on the state of our party. These issues should be sorted out. And if we listen to each other, then we can sort out these issues. Okay. If we don't listen to each other, mm -hmm. then we can sit back and say, let us leave everybody to fate. And fate means what? If you, because what it sounds like you're saying is that ODM isn't living up to the ideals, um, you know, that you once thought inclusivity, mm. democracy, and uh, uh, consultation from within. Mm. If you get to a point and you feel like you are not being heard constantly, because Kenyans are saying, you're coming to us and you're part of the top brass of the party, which is all well and good, but if it comes to a point where you think you're not being listened to anymore and you won't make any headway, what will you do then? Will you leave ODM? I'm not leaving ODM. What I can tell you for certainty is that um, the position of Secretary General is uh, a position in the leadership of this party. Right. I came to this position with very good credentials. And as I've said, my performance in the past, my performance in parliament, my performance in the field through processes like ODM Reloaded, mm -hmm. and me, the very high title, there's nobody else in this party called General. And I'm not called General for nothing. I'm general because I have led and led from the front okay. without fear, without any prevarication. And I want to serve in a similar manner as Secretary General of this party. And if it no longer if is tenable? If it is no longer tenable uh -huh. to serve in this position, uh -huh. then I certainly would not continue to hold this position. Okay. Absolutely. Would you then leave the party? It does not mean, Yvonne, if you're listening to me. It's a question. I have served ODM previously superbly mm -hmm. without any official portfolio. When I was leading ODM Reloaded, when I have fought so publicly on the floor of parliament, mm -hmm. go, for instance, into the archives of this party. Okay. I led the All charge right. against the security laws Great. amendment but, bill but in the house. My, my well, no, no, my question. answer is this. Uh -huh. It does not mean that when I'm not Secretary General of this party, yeah. I cannot continue to serve the party okay. in the capacity of an Would ordinary member. Would you continue member? to serve the party in an ordinary capacity mm -hmm. if suddenly these ideals that you say you hold dear and that ODM should have? It's, it's, a, it's a question of... I get you. Yes. And let me answer you. The ideals of the party, I, they no I'll longer speak you. to you. <laughs> Would you then you. want to continue to be associated with a party whose ideals you do not... Yvonne, um, I, have the, I have the habit of crossing a bridge when I come to it. Okay. When I get to that bridge, I certainly will cross it. Can you tell us where you'll be crossing to? <laughs> <laughs> that is the bridge. <laughs> that is the bridge, Yvonne. But the bridge must lead to somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I mean. Right? That's the bridge. <laughs> and when we get to that bridge, yeah. I, I, have, um, I have faith. I have uh, a level of confidence. Uh -huh that um, if we want to make our party better, we want to strengthen this party, if we know that the business of a political party is not to remain rooted in the opposition, the business of a political party is to seek to capture and exercise political power to the benefit of citizens, mm -hmm. then we'll address these issues so that we can go into the next elections prepared to capture power. Yeah. And, if and you still think you can capture power? Why you not? You still think Rilo can be president Why in 2017? Not? Why not? Would you run for president under ODM in 2017? What makes the other presidential candidates better than Ababu Namwamba? Okay. If the other candidates can be presidential material, uh -huh. I certainly, Ababu Namwamba is certainly presidential material. Okay, we'll yes. leave it at that okay. for <laughs> now. Thank you very much, Secretary General Thank of you. the Orange Democratic Movement, Ababu Namwamba, on the recent wrangles, as it were, in the party.
Um, he's been giving us his views on that. And also, you don't want to miss my take on that. My editorial at the end of the show is about what is going on within ODM and indeed what is going on within political parties in the country. Let's move on to other stories. We thank you for your time. Now, in what appears to be an orchestrated campaign, yet another Jubilee leader is casting doubt on Deputy President William Ruto's candidacy in 2022. Nominated Senator Paul Njoroge is the latest on a string of leaders appearing to sideline Ruto in Jubilee politics after the 2017 elections. Now this comes as the Deputy President appeals to opposition leaders to support the government in developing the nation. There is no doubt about Deputy President William Ruto's presidential ambitions. And so far, he has stuck to the Jubilee tune of seeking a second term in office with President Uru Kenyatta in 2017. In turn, there has been a general understanding that he will seek the presidency and the coalition will support him after Uhuru completes his two terms. But now, nominated Senator Paul Njoroge, who hails from Nakuru County, has come out to ask Ruto not to expect an automatic support from Mount Kenya region and that all efforts should be concentrated in 2017. What I know is Uhuru is working towards coming again as the presidential candidate. What I do not know and what I'm not sure is whether he's convinced if, Uhuru, if Ruto is the right person as a running mate. Leave alone now the 2022 thing. According to the senator, the deputy president is already facing rebellion within his Rift Valley backyard. Hence, he should resolve the internal differences before crisscrossing the country seeking for votes. Ajatuambia exactly uh, wanaenda na nani. Ndiyo tuangalie vile mambo itakuwa. And then unaona kuna shida huko Rift Valley. Uh, unaona sasa tukichanganya mambo na mna hivi. Finally itakuja kulete, kutuletea shida. <laughs> Njoroge's sentiments comes only a few weeks after Kiambu governor William Kabogo was quoted to have said that Mount Kenya people will have to meet first before agreeing to support William Ruto as the country's fifth president. Wengine wakisemama mbele ya watu hawana lolote wao chochote cha kusema. Ni kutafuta tu uchochezi jamii hii na jamii ile. Hiyo kura mimi nitatafuta kabisa bwana Kabogo. Hii nitafanya juu chini. Nita hustle kila kijiji na kila kona mpaka nipate. 2022 is so far that no one can claim that he has a monopoly of 2022. It is only it is only sensible that we forget about that. Meanwhile, the deputy president who had attended a church service in Mwala constituency, Machakos County, indicated that the government was more than ready to incorporate all leaders, regardless of their political affiliations, for the sake of development in the country. The only place we know where people are bought or sold is in a slave market. So if you believe in a slave market, my friend, you are not a democrat of any shape. You are retrogressive and backward. Kenya does not belong in that kind of age. We believe in a free society. It appears that the deputy president is not discouraged by the anti-Ruto narrative as he continues to campaign. Chris Dairo, KTN News. Now it's time for us to go down memory lane on Lest We Forget Tonight. And we're doing this every single Sunday. We're reminding you that here's our countdown. Remember, we have 407 days to the next general election. That's in August 2017. And we also want to remind you that voter registration is ongoing and it is happening at the constituency level. So please make sure you go to your constituency offices. And right here, as we remind you of your civic duty and remind you that you are the ultimate decider for who gets uh, to lead at all levels over the next five years, uh, we're working and we're getting in touch with the IE EBC because we're getting a number of queries from you on Twitter and on our WhatsApp line. Remember, that's the deadline um, for voter registration here in the country. We're getting a number of uh, queries from you. Uh, many of you who have tried this process and we'll be speaking to IBC and hopefully to hear from them. But we would like you to give us your feedback on this process. This is our WhatsApp number, 0706-727272. So please do get in touch with us. Even if you're not able to send pictures, because uh, the feedback we're getting from a number of you is you're scared of sending us some pictures. But let's uh, get into your feedback. And remember, this will all go to the IEBC on Twitter. This is what Joseph Otaka says, that for Kenyans living um, along the border, they're being subjected to tough vetting process. 
um, and they don't get the IDs. Of course, the ID is the first process uh, before getting yourself registered. Here's another one. Good work you're doing. Let all Kenyans know that voter registration is a continuous process at all IBC offices. You can also go to your Huduma centers. But across the 290 constituencies, this is something that's happening. So on that WhatsApp line that we've been giving you, here's some feedback we've gotten saying, hi, I registered as a voter in Nakuru in 2013. You want to uh, change your polling station. Yes, it is possible. You won't be registering again. You will simply be changing your voting or your polling station. Um, Here's another one. Where can I get it? In Wasangishu County. I'm not registered as a voter. We have so much more feedback. Remember, we're working uh, very closely with the IBC. We're getting in touch with them and we're sending them all of this feedback so that they can directly answer your queries. But even as we wait for the response from IBC, lest you forget, this is something that is happening and it is happening right now across the 290 constituency offices in the country. Voter registration is continuous. When everybody is getting ready for the election, when there are talks about the IEBC, when the politicians are sitting down making their plans, and trust me, they are, what plans are you making? The first one starts with registering yourself as a voter. So keep your comments coming in, 706 727272 and we will definitely forward this to IEBC, and hopefully next week we'll have many of your responses and your queries answered by the IEBC. That's lest we forget tonight on Checkpoint. Okay, so here's our interesting number of the week and we had, uh, you know, that historic vote in Europe where Britain voted to leave the European Union. Now, there's been a lot of interesting things about who voted what and why, Scotland and Ireland as well, but this is a very interesting, um, you know, infographic and we've got it from YouGov. Now take a look at the numbers of people that voted in this age group here. So those between 18 to 24 years of age, median age is 21, 64% of them voted to remain. Now what we like most about this one, if I can walk along here, is this is the average life expectancy in the UK at 90 years of age. This means that these young people have 69 years to live with that decision they have made. And this is interesting because a lot of young people voted to remain. They want to live, love, and work wherever across Europe. 25 to 49 years of age, 45% of them voted to remain in the EU. And of course, they have another 52 years uh, to live with that decision. And as you can see, the numbers obviously go down as you go uh, much higher in age. But if you put these two numbers together, persons between the ages of 18 and 49, and if you look at those two numbers, many of them voting to remain, then it tells you an interesting story about the age gap and how um, the young people versus uh, the senior citizens consider the decision to remain. Now we're hearing of a possible second referendum, we will wait to see. But this is the next one that is really interesting and it's not quite the number but it does quite tell you about these young people versus the old ones and whether they knew what they were getting themselves into. This are the top questions that were asked on the European Union. Now, please note these questions were asked after the official Brexit result was announced. One, what does it mean to leave the EU? Two, in fact, what is the EU to begin with? Which countries are in the EU? And what happens now that we've left the EU? Some rather pertinent questions that you would think they would have asked before the vote. So that is your number and it's looking very interesting and we'll be waiting to see just what happens if there will be a second one. If it means it's the end of Great Britain and United Kingdom as we know it, um, as soon as the decisions there and if this is something that will spill over. But rather interesting that a lot of the young people voted to remain in the EU. That is your number tonight.